The following program, The Lightning Strike, is sponsored by Muhammad Fahim and to the extent applicable their guests. The views and opinions expressed therein do not necessarily reflect those of Heartland Signal, LLC, or its management. Get ready to be jolted out of the ordinary and into a world where conversations are charged with intensity and facts. The Lightning Strike Talk Radio with your host, Mohammed Fahim, broadcasting live from the heart of the city on Chicago's Progressive Talk Radio, WCPT 820 AM. Welcome to a radio show that charges through the airwaves with an electricity like no other. Here's your host, Mohammed Fahim. Okay, folks. <laughs> Good morning. This is Mohamed Fahim. Welcome to uh, the Lightning Strike Sunday mornings. And uh, please don't eat your cats and dogs if you have them and uh, keep them safe. Uh, welcome again. And uh, we've got uh, my co host uh, in the studios today, Ken DeLuke. Howdy, folks. Uh, John Arena. Good morning. And uh, Murray Newman. Good morning. So let's uh, get the show on the, on, the, on the road now. We had a fantastic debate that we had spoken about before the debate. Now, after the debate, if you want to go ahead and get uh, your thoughts in as to, you know, what happened and what should have happened, uh, maybe your take on that, if you want to. The number to call in is 773-763-WCPT. And uh, you're always welcome to text us on this number also. The number is 773 773- Seven six three nine two seven eight. You can call or you can text me, and we'll get your thoughts uh, and share them with the rest of Chicago land and the rest of the nation. So, Marie, let's start off with your reactions to what happened on the debate stage. I, I think Trump won. Really? <laughs> that's, a, that's a very fascinating take. Oh, well, no, that's, that's pretty bold, guys. Yeah, that's pretty I, bold. You know, well, I think that, he was he was knocked out in round one. That's what I meant to say. Right. Well, interestingly, if I stay on just the uh, Kamala side for a hot minute, um, her performance will probably be put into every forensics and debate class as the um, supreme example of how you should do a debate i mean literally flawless um in every way and i've never said that ever of all the debates i've seen in my life Mm -hmm. um most of all my own i mean like i look at my own performance on debates and go oh man i got a lot to learn um so uh so let's just start there it was absolutely flawless um the fact that she had facts she did present policy i know some people were um really quibbling over that it wasn't a lot because there's a lot to get in and by the way debates should never go a deep dive into policy yeah. it just doesn't yeah happen. and so the debate a, is not meant to yeah, do a deep dive into policy silly, you're to mention some ideas yeah. so that people know how you want to handle things um on the trump side for a, a hot second um i have never seen a worse performance quite literally Hey, I mean, he quite has, literally. He, like, he, has, he has a concept of a plan? Come on. Yeah. My favorite line ever. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, like, After been, nine years. Yeah, <laughs> nine years. And then also, too, like, <clears throat> okay. how embarrassing for a major political figure to say, I have a concept. Uh, yep. yeah. You know, my, my daughter was asking this question. Dad, Republicans on the whole seem to be well-educated. Uh, they have made a lot of money and all that. Couldn't they find someone else to represent the party and their values except this one person? Well, you see, that's not the Republican Party anymore. It's the MAGA Party. It's two separate issues. I mean, Kessinger and uh, Cheney, those are Republicans, or even Mitt Romney. Um, The guys that are just sycophants and kissing up, that's that's a whole different thing. So, John, what was your favorite line from uh, the quote-unquote... Debate. I would say debacle if, if you if you call me that for Trump and his team. Well, I just definitely got to give credit to Kamala for being prepared. You know, obviously the issues is what you generally get prepared for on a debate. This was different because she had to prepare for who she was debating and and the unique, you know, stream of consciousness kind of ramblings that he does and. I think she struck this great balance of, you know, having that split screen of her looking at him sideways. Going oh, that, that, that was priceless. That was priceless. And, so and, and she did just the right amount of baiting. Like, she didn't overdo it. So it, it, it was very 
uh, opaque when it was coming in. She would just put a little drop in the water, and then he would just drink up the whole glass. <laughs> so I, I just like from that level of just but especially, how it went. Especially for a person who Trump had characterized as dumb as a rock before the yeah, debate. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, this is why we see this kind of meltdown with him, because he can't lose to a woman. He can't lose to a black woman, right? He can't lose to woman. anybody, right? I mean, go down the list of what she, how, of, of, the, you know, of, of, you know, of the way he identifies her and denigrates everything about her that is not. One of the, uh, one of the late night show comedians had a great line on that. Uh, he said that, hey, uh, people sometimes, uh, people have to pay to get ragged on the behind like that <laughs> by a woman. So. Yes, that was good. And My favorite like, part was when um, she um, said that his crowd size, people, you know, were getting bored and they were leaving. That just put him over the that edge. That was it. Yeah. She, I mean, she, the debate, I yeah. I mean, she launched with a handshake yeah. and, and he said, let's have fun. Like, like, he completely wasn't prepared to even greet her in any way. And then she just went into and those. By the way, she had to chase him down on the stage. She did, which yeah. uh, again, a, and I have done this as a woman. Control, I've had right? to chase my opponent down sure. on the stage, and it sent them over the edge too. So yeah. I, it is highly effective. So, fun. folks, doesn't uh, it seem like that was about two months ago that debate? I mean, as much as everyone's been talking Tuesday. about, it was only two days. Yeah. So, 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 folks, the number to call in is seven seven three seven six three nine two seven eight. Again, seven seven three. Seven six three nine two seven eight. If you want to call in and give uh, your side of the story as to what you felt, uh, who you think uh, won the debate or did not win the debate, and uh, by the way, <laughs> the, the be best thing that the, one of the memes that I sent out the other day. Uh, remember, I shared you uh, shared with you guys. Why did the chicken cross the road? <laughs> <laughs> to avoid another debate with Kamal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. So that, that I, I, have a take thing, on, I have a take on this debate, and <laughs> okay. um, I, I wanted to share it because, as most people are familiar with the uh, the story that actually started with Mother Goose and turned into Fido the dog and Garfield the cat and lunch, um, at first it was like, what? And at, at second it was funny, and at third it became a meme. But it's taking on a very dark side now, folks, with the Haitian population of Springfield, uh, Ohio. And they've been taking the brunt of this hideous attack. There's been three days of bomb threats to schools, medical centers, uh, people rolling down their windows and shouting Trump at anyone they think looks Haitian. Haitians are afraid to leave their homes. Mayor Rob Rue is pleading to stop the lies, okay? Now, Trump is just perpetuating this nonsense. He's already been told by David Muir during the debate that that wasn't real. He, he repeated it two or three times, and even, I think, yesterday is saying it one more time again. And there's only two reasons why. Either he is just losing it. He's got the attention span of a goldfish because he's not following, you know, the news items. And you know who he is. Or two, it's intentional. Now, if you're old enough to remember or if you, in school, read history, back in the 30s, there was a guy named Adolf, and he had to uh, increase his power of uh, was his Was his last name Hitler? Yeah, it could have been. <laughs> Something like that. But in order to increase his, um, his essence, he had to have a scapegoat, and he picked on a group of people that is known as the Jews. Right now, this is exactly, is there a correlation here? I mean, the immigrants, oh, these, these, these immigrants are coming over by the millions from the sane asylums, from all the prisons. He's got to have a scapegoat that he's going to save us from, you know. So think about that. It's just kind of crazy. In fact, as we're going into this debate, now, I don't know if you guys, but sometimes it drives me nuts that they'll ask a question, and basically the answer will be, something that maybe resembles an answer to that question, or it'll just ramble off into other things. I'm thinking, let's do a mini-debate, and I'm going to put this out there to our audience as well. If you have any, uh, I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about, and if you have a, a good mini-debate question in this kind of format, let me know what that is. Okay, I got two of them for myself, okay? For example, the, uh, the question on tariffs, that's been going around for the past four years, but that's also something that Trump seems to really go nuts on, saying how he's going to get us millions of dollars. Here's a question I would ask, and I would ask it to both candidates, okay? Is this a good definition of a tariff? 
A product that comes from country A charges $10 per unit. We add on a tariff on our side to make that cost $12. The result is $10 goes to the country, $2 goes to the United States. The consumer pays $12. You could almost call that a sales tax, or better still, an increase of inflation rate by 20%. What do you think? Now, how do you think each one of those um, okay, let's, candidates uh, would answer that? Let's uh, get a couple of callers uh, that have been holding on for a while now. Let's uh, get them on the line. Let's start off with uh, Amit from uh, Juliet. Thank you so much for listening in. Thank you so much for calling in. And uh, your take on the debate, Amit. Hello. You know what I mean? Yep. Go ahead, please. You oh. take. I mean. Yeah, I was just going to mention two things. Most of what I was going to say, uh, you and your guests have already mentioned. But one thing I definitely going to mention is something Carl Rove said. Because one of you mentioned when uh, Trump said she was as dumb as a rock. Yep. Carl Rove put the question for us that, that he said she's as dumb as a rock. And he actually asked, asked him in his. In his uh, in his column, Wall Street Journal column, he said, if she's dumb as a rock, what does that make you? <laughs> I thought that was great. <laughs> that and that's Carl Rove. Well, yeah, Carl when, you, <laughs> when, you, when, you, when you pick up a rock, what do you see under the rock? <laughs> Okay, that's okay. A creepy crawly. Yeah, that's what that. that's what it makes him. I mean, okay, but here's the, here's the thing again, folks. This is going to be fundamental for our democracy. It's going to be fundamental for our future and the future of our children. Please get out and vote in November and choose wisely. Okay, this guy has gone off the rails in such a huge way that it. it I don't know. I mean, no one has any respect for him except for his uh, followers, his cult followers. And that's about uh, all that I can think of at this moment. Uh, Let's see if we got uh, Roosevelt also chiming in. Roosevelt, you say it's over for Trump. Well, uh, it has been over for a while, but he does not realize that. One of the fundamentals of a dictator is something that we were discussing. Um, John, you you and Marie had some thoughts on what a dictator is, right? What is a dictator? (laughs) Um, well, I mean, it's it's somebody where a, a system where everything comes from one person, right? The mind of one person, and the, the psychology behind that is he can never be wrong, right? The dictator, right? Yeah. Now, and we know Trump can never be wrong as a, a personal uh, defect in the way he looks at stuff, but that's the key, right? A democracy asks for input and has discussions and debate, and then you arrive at some common ground. But a dictatorship that Trump wants to impose and Project Twenty Twenty Five wants to establish is something where you can't have those debates. It's fundamental to that. Oh, boy. Hey, Trump never heard of Project 2025. Let's not forget it, okay? Come on. Yeah. It Please, I mean, he's such a great guy. He, he does not know what Project 2025 is. He's, he does not even know. He ironically has heard of very little. This is what I don't understand. He listens to people on TV. I think you asked me yeah. what's my favorite line is, when you're, when you're challenging the fact check that's happening in real time with, but I heard it on TV, you know, when you weigh those two things, you know, the city manager of the city, and I was yeah. in city government, a city manager knows what's going on in their city. They have to. That's their job. More than anyone. More than anybody else. So to say, but I heard people on TV, and the, the people on TV is his vice presidential candidate, which is spitting these memes out. And saying, well, if if we hadn't done this, nobody would be covering this important story. Hey, uh, let's uh, <laughs> let's go insane. to Roosevelt uh, in Chicago. But before we go to Roosevelt, uh, Dylan, would you mind playing the cats and dog thing again for me, please? <laughs> I, I I I I love that Just so. For its entertainment. <laughs> I love that so much. So Roosevelt, before we come to you, let's uh, go back and listen to my favorite uh, thing going on out there now about the cats and the dogs and yes. them not being Eat eating. The cat. Eat, eat the cat. Okay, so they're not eating Taylor the Swift. cats. It's and not that. Taylor Swift. It's okay. <laughs> oh, and by the way, uh, the righties are coming out and saying that Taylor Swift has lost about approximately $150 million since her endorsement. I don't know where they come up with these. Are they returning the, with these the figures, digital man. downloads <laughs> okay. back to Target? Like so, Roosevelt, good morning. You are on the lightning strike, my friend. Thank you for calling in. 
Good morning. Thank you for taking my call. Uh, Always. First of all, first of all, I want to say happy Inde- Mexican Independence Day since I'm Mexican, Mexican born. Yeah. Uh, second, congratulations to Canelo Alvarez. He won yesterday. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't know if you, you guys heard about that. Yep, Retained and Mexican Independence Day is tomorrow, so congratulations to all our Mexican yeah. listeners and uh, citizens over the, of the United States over here. Guys, I wanted to add to uh, a, a few of the things that you the guys were talking about. That ridiculous story you guys have been reporting about the cats and dogs, but now it's the geese. Geese, tell them about the geese. You know, the, <laughs> the, the geese are disappearing. <laughs> well, that's actually where the story started, as the goose. <laughs> okay. So. Yeah, okay, the, Roosevelt, come yeah. on, man. Okay. <laughs> we, 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 we got to. Well, let's be clear. Okay. This story started from a source that was the neighbor's daughter's sister's friend. Yep. Like that. Like that's how far away from wherever we are from this is becoming a national debate. And well, she even and, said and, she even said that she is very upset that this happened. You know, it got blown up four thousand times, yeah. and like it was never her intent to start but, this. Yeah. Okay, so let's uh, take a quick break before we go on to Ron Michigan. And you know, folks, with elections coming on, it is very important that you understand who you are voting for, where the information is coming from, and we got the, just the right resource for you uh, to think about when you go out to vote. Go to vote. IQ dot com uh, dot org. Sorry, vote IQ dot org. You can uh, also go to the Play Store and download the app, and that will give you all the information that you want to know about the elections and the candidates coming up. So we'll take a quick break, and on the back end of the break, we'll be back uh, with Ron from Michigan. Thanks for holding on, Ron. Did you know there's an Illinois mandate that states by 2025, ComEd has to have 25% of the energy they deliver come from a green source? Because of this, plus the fees and taxes you've already paid on this program, if you qualify, you can get solar on your home at no out-of-pocket cost. This can mean an average savings on your electric bill of maybe 30 to 50%. More importantly, it would eliminate the uncertainty of ComEd raising your rates by whoever knows how much each year. Some people have noticed a 41% increase on their bill this spring, and ComEd has been asking for another 80% increase over the next four years. If your average bill is 200 bucks a month now, maybe it could be reduced to 100 bucks a month. Now, five years, would you rather pay 115 or possibly four to 500? If you'd like to see if you can qualify for this program, call Ken DeLook at 312-617-8979. That's 312-617-8979. Help us save the environment and change that electric bill burden. That's 312-617-8979. Take advantage of this program while it's still available. Welcome back to the Lightning Strike with Mohammed Fahim. Good morning, folks, and uh, welcome back to the Lightning Strike. We come here every Sunday morning from 9 to 10 on WCPT, Chicago's progressive talk radio station. And also, you can uh, watch us live on Facebook when you go to the WCPT website. Uh, just uh, watch us live there, or you can listen to us live nationwide, uh, internationally, anywhere that you have an internet connection on the heartlandsignal.com website. Uh, so, Ron, you wanted to talk about uh, the dogs and the cats, uh, and uh, that reminds you of Vietnam, of all places? Why, man? Why Vietnam? Well, Mohammed, if any Vietnam veteran who's listening right now will attest to this. You did not see any dogs and cats in Vietnam unless they were living on U.S. Army bases. Now, that was part of the cuisine of the people who lived in Vietnam. Yeah, that's, okay. that's, that's, their norm, that's, their, that's their normal cuisine over there. Yes. Now, in 73, 74, many Vietnamese refugees were uh, brought over to the United States, and they settled in, in Milwaukee in particular, because I had veterans friends who were there, and dogs and cats were disappearing in a neighborhood, and there was a Vietnamese restaurant that had opened up, 
And these veterans went over there, and they found a number of the pets in the neighborhood still alive in, in that uh, restaurant. So, um, But this is a uh, rumor that uh, Trump, the Republic scum, are spreading is nothing but lies to start a race riot, plain and simple. But there, it, there is, you know, and what I'm saying here, it goes I'm back 25. to immigrants. It goes back to immigrants coming to this country and uh, living their lifestyle and not uh, fully embracing ours until they learn the culture. Of so, course. Uh, hey, Ron, you know, you bring up a good point. I'm guessing this might actually backfire on Trump um, for this reason alone. Uh, in Florida, which is uh, not, it's pretty red right now, but there are over um, 544 naturalized citizens in Florida of Haitian descent. Okay. If uh, now that he's going against the Haitians and with this, you know, rhetoric about dogs and cats, and that's a swing state, do you think that uh, Florida just has, you know, chance of taking Florida just got a little bit better, maybe? Yes, yes, I do agree with you. And but well, overall, far-reaching, it is our fault that the Haitian refugees are here. Our policy, going back to the, the the liberation of Haiti from the French by the Haitian revolutionaries, ever since then the world has been at war with Haiti and us in particular because we are right off their border. You know, if we had not used them as a uh, a weapon uh, to, to fight against other uh, socialists or uh, just people who want to live their lives without imperialism in Central South America, the Caribbean. But Haiti has been used as that scapegoat, and to this day it is uh, taking the brunt. And it's our fault that, that these Haitian refugees Well, are there's, uh, there's lots of stuff that we have done over the years in uh, lots of countries around the world uh, to have them uh, come back and uh, hold us accountable. So, Ron, thank you so much for calling in, and thank you so much for listening uh, in Michigan, and please keep your dogs and cats safe in Michigan. <laughs> I, think there's something, I think there's something that is being missed in this. While, the, you know, while we joke about this, these, these are people who are coming away from the, the, just the breakdown of the government system in Haiti. Yep. They are here legally, okay? So they have, they have protected status. They were invited to the town, because the town didn't have enough population to run the industry that it did have, which is an irony where we have so many small towns in our uh, in, in the Midwest that lose the business, and then and then you have people with no jobs. They were invited there. They are uh, recent reports say that at least ten businesses have been opened by Haitian immigrants in addition to other. Well, new uh, John, I'm, I'm, I'm so, so they glad. Are actually, participating in the economy, they were invited there. Yeah. And yes, there's housing struggles and there's things that happen. But to to vilify this population and to, for a presidential candidate to say, I'm going to subvert the immigration law and kick yep. them out when they're here legally, that means we're all we're all at risk. Then, ab 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 we're absolutely. Legally. Absolutely. And, and you brought up a very good point that most of the immigrants who are coming in and who are legally over here bring a lot of value to yes. us. A lot of value because they come in, they are hardworking, they want to achieve the American dream. And hey, as an immigrant myself starting out here about 40 years back, I know what I had to do uh, to make a, a living in this country and to make good and give back. So, yeah, immigrants do bring a lot of value. So and thank actually, you. we need the immigrants. I mean, mm -hmm. as a nation, we do. We have uh, way more job openings than we have people to fill them right now. So, it's uh, to make a you know, demify the immigrants for political gains is in the long run just going to hurt the nation. Okay, so uh, we'll take uh, one more call and then we'll take a break and we'll come back on the other side of the break with a lot more discussions and things. And uh, again, if you want to chime in, folks, the number to call in is 773-763-9278. By the way, uh, we have completed our first year of broadcasting on WCPT this month. And uh, thank you all for the support. Thank you all for listening. And uh, thank you again to the audience for getting. And thank you to Dylan for, for the, that, that great applause line over there. Dave, good morning. You are on the lightning strike. Thank you so much uh, for holding on. Uh, good morning, Matt. And uh, John, uh, on the debate, I, I kind of rather enjoyed that, uh, that Lloyd Benson, Dan Quayle moment when uh, Kamala Harris told uh, Trump that uh, 
I'm not Joe Biden. I'm not running against Joe Biden here. This is Kamala Harris. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that, that, that was the best line that stuck with you. Another line that stuck with me, and, folks, is don't forget, sir, that you have been fired by 81 million Americans. Yeah. <laughs> and second, the second one real quick was that, the, could this be a little bit of projection, more or less, when, when he got all flustered and mad and talking about crowd size, and he said that, oh, she bust 400 people in and paid them. This if I remember out. correctly, when someone was coming down an escalator, I heard that same that's story. What just, that's what I was just going to follow up with, that he was paying people like this fuck to do it and that. <laughs> like like Murray started off by uh, saying, Dave. Murray started off by saying that this was a master class in political debating. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and it could not have been yeah. done better. And again, I come back uh, to to my premise of why did the chicken cross the road, John? <laughs> <laughs> to avoid debating Kamala Harris. <laughs> to, to avoid debating Kamala Harris again. Okay. So we never know with this, folks. And uh, again, we'll take a quick break. If you want to know more about what is happening in the political world, who's running for what office, what do you need to know to make the right decisions, make sure that you log on and download the Vote IQ app from the Play Store. Uh, you can go online also and download it from voteiq.org. So it's very important for us to understand that the system is so complex. How can we make it more easy for you to break it down to make the right decision? Attention, voters, your voice matters now more than ever. Are you registered to vote? Don't wait. Download the Voter IQ app today from the Play Store or visit us online at www.voteiq.org. Voter IQ keeps you informed about every local and national office. Plus, real-time political news updates. Stay in the know, stay empowered, and make your vote count. Download Voter IQ now and be election ready. Voter IQ, because an informed voter is a powerful voter. Did you know there's an Illinois mandate that states by 2025, ComEd has to have 25% of the energy they deliver come from a green source? Because of this, plus the fees and taxes you've already paid on this program, if you qualify, you can get solar on your home at no out-of-pocket cost. This can mean an average savings on your electric bill of maybe 30 to 50%. More importantly, it would eliminate the uncertainty of ComEd raising your rates by whoever knows how much each year. Some people have noticed a 41% increase on their bill this spring, and ComEd has been asking for another 80% increase over the next four years. If your average bill is 200 bucks a month now, maybe it could be reduced to 100 bucks a month. Now, five years, would you rather pay 115 or possibly four to 500? If you'd like to see if you can qualify for this program, call Ken Luke at 312-617-8979. That's 312-617-8979. Help us save the environment and change that electric bill burden. That's 312-617-8979. Take advantage of this program while it's still available. Welcome back to the Lightning Strike with Mohammed Fahim. Good morning, folks. Welcome back to the Lightning Strike. Uh, the number to call in if you want to join the conversation is 773-763-9278. And I'm, I'm getting into the habit of watching Trump and using my hands like this all the time while I'm talking now. So I'm so sorry if you see me on, on Facebook and you see me doing this with my hands. Man, Trump is rubbing off on me. Okay. <laughs> but hey, this is the best program that is out there. This is the best show out there. This is the biggest show in the country right now. Did you folks know that? Is that us? Wow. <laughs> I guess so, man. And anything that we do is the biggest and the best. And we don't bust people in to listen to us. 
and people don't leave us while they are listening to us so they are not shutting down the radio and, and then walking out of, uh, of of our audience pool over here so on that note uh, Ken you had a suggestion for the debate yeah we well we started out the show talking about many debate questions I gave you one of them on a tariff uh, my other question I'll give that and then um, I'll, we'll talk to John and Marie and see what they've come up with and if anybody's listening would like to uh, have a debate question that you didn't hear that you'd like to hear please share it with us our phone number is 773-763-9278 so the second question and I'd love to see this in a debate do you believe that if you keep on telling the public the same lie over and over and over again the people will believe the lie now think about that how do you think that Donald Trump would answer that and how do you think that Kamala Harris would answer that I mean you know, I th one, I can just say, yes, that's, you know, people are influenced by things they hear over and over again. I was in advertising and marketing, and you never buy just one ad. You, you don't recommend your client, yeah, we can just do this once. One one caveat, Apple in 1984, because they only had a million dollars. But it was a great ad. But the worked. point is, it worked. But, but that's the exception to the norm. You have to repeat to get people to connect with something. And so, for example, we were talking about uh, voter voter ID laws. It, right now, 81% of people believe that some kind of voter ID law would be appropriate or they would be okay with it. The mm -hmm. details aren't are left out. But I'm just saying. The, the challenge is that isn't the case 20 years ago. In, in 20 years, we've only had 85 documented cases of voter fraud. So the only way we get here is is a systemic, you know, role of the Republican Party to constantly challenge the reality that voters voters need IDs in order to run effective, safe, and uh, secure campaigns. So well, when you when you of, when you register as as a voter, I'm I'm a registrar, okay, for the state of Illinois. I can register voters, and as a registrar, when someone comes in to vote, we are asking them for their ID anyhow. Uh, when we are registering them to vote. So when you come out to vote as a registered voter, you don't need to show anything at that point. Yeah. Unless you have not been registered as a voter and you're just walking in right. on the day of the election to right. vote, then of course you got to show some ID. So, uh, but as far as uh, lies and repeated lies, reminds me of this person called Joseph Goebbels. Does that ring a bell, guys? Yeah. Okay, he was this, big in the 1930s. Yeah, this this was the guy that really pumped up Hitler's misinformation campaign, and I think uh, the uh, Trump and his cohorts are taking a leaf out of that uh, that notebook over there. Thirty three documented lies in ninety minute debate. So how much uh, that is like what a, a lie every three minutes or something like that? Two minutes. Mm -hmm. So how can we trust someone like that? That's that's the issue that is that should be at the forefront of the voters' minds, folks. It's not so much about policy. It's not so much about well, what have the Democrats done. It's not so much about the Democrats supporting this policy or that policy. At least there is not as much uh, make up things, lies. And he comes up with all kinds of crazy, you know, I mean, I don't want to offend the offend the FEC rules by using four-letter words, but <laughs> it is so difficult to hold back. Okay, so you can see if you are watching me on on Facebook, just take this, man. I'm, I'm so frustrated. Okay, so we got uh, Alberian calling in from Albany Park and uh, wants to talk about uh, Kamala will be cleaning up Trump's mess. Mm -hmm. Good morning. You are on the on the lightning strike. Thanks for calling in. Thanks for listening to us. And we still have the debate question going on. So if you want to chime in on that as to what would be a debate question that you would like to to hear in the next debate, uh, keep that in mind. Go ahead. You are on the air. Oh, hi. This is Al in Franklin Park. Hey, Al. And I was just going to make the point that, uh, you know, we have the uh, Haitian immigrants. I think I got that right. And one of your last callers said that, you know, we've we've had our neoliberal policies down there and and so on. And we have to remember that under the Obama administration, we were working uh, with 
those countries trying to uh, uh, f- uh, fix our policies and, and work with the government. And when Trump came in, they just stopped doing it. And now, once again, over Biden Harris, you know, Harris was 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 was, uh, uh, was told to uh, help with those policies in in uh, the uh, Central American countries, and she has been doing that. And 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 we can't go back to just you know, there's so many things that when we got Trump in there or when we get another Republican president in there that we stop those policies and stop working on them. And that could be a question, you know, would you be continuing these current policies? And one can even look at COVID. And that we used to have a COVID team that was in China watching what is going on to help prevent a pandemic. And uh, Trump got in and threw that all the way. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, Trump has this uh, this concept, Al, that only he knows what is right and what is wrong. And that is the first sight of not uh, being a good leader. I think you got your radio on so we can hear some feedback coming in. Uh, so oh, you can, I, I yeah. am very sorry. That's uh, <laughs> yeah, we can hear the feedback coming in yeah, okay. through, through your radio. Uh, so if you could please uh, tune down your radio and just listen to us on the, on the phone while we are talking. Okay. I okay. actually just went, went way into another room, so it's not there anymore. <laughs> okay. El, thank you so much for listening, and spread the word. The, here's the thing. Talk with your family. Talk with your friends. That's the best advertising that we can do. All these flyers and things coming through the mail, all the TV ads, uh, all the radio ads that you hear, uh, they are designed actually to to influence you to make a decision which could not be the right decision for you in the long run, right? So talk with your family, talk with your friends, educate them. Have them go on to this Vote IQ app that we are promoting over here now. Download the Vote IQ app uh, from the Play Store or go to the web and download it. Uh, for, you know, Just register at voteiq.org and you'll get to see and listen and know more about the candidates and uh, their positions, everything that you want to know. And uh, it is also has this great thing that you can have uh, surveys and uh, polls that you can take part in. You can follow the candidates. Uh, you can have a discussion group. You can get news updates in real time uh, on this app over there. Uh, Al, thank you so much uh, for calling in. Thank you for listening. And uh, please okay. uh, continue to listen, continue to be a part of that we can make the change, okay? And let's not worry so much about the extreme right wing. Speaking of right wing, John, uh, Twitter and our friend uh, Al, uh, what is his? Elon? What, Elon Musk. Ah. Oh, God. Man, what a character. And now wow. Trump wants to be. bring Elon into his administration if he gets elected. Is it true that he's Taylor Swift now? Is that what you I know, that, that, I mean, <laughs> of, of all of the debauchery that we've heard from some of these, the worst of us in this on this planet what he said in that tweet about you know her being a childless cat lady is just i mean that's that's borderline that's criminal i mean that's basically you know talking about rape to me i mean that's what he's saying and it's yep. it it just shows that the lack of respect that they have for 53% of the population as to what how he sees uh women and 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 we see this systemically in the in the debate about abortion that you know this women are vessels to reproduce and not human beings to be engaged with and that's the the sick part of what he said well that that's uh, Marie, especially coming from a woman's point of view a woman should have the right to her own body man pure and simple and for this guy to come in on a national debate stage and come up with this ridiculous statement that kids are being uh, aborted even after, after they've been born. I mean, does it make even semantic sense to say that someone is being aborted after they are born? You know, rightfully so, uh, the ABC moderator corrected him, said that would be murder and it is not allowed in any state, federally, locally, or anything. So it's a ridiculous comment, and particularly incendiary for a um, former president to say, but um, here's what I will say is, is that what it's about what we can expect. And I think this is where uh, Kamala was masterful. She came back in her answer and, and tied it to 
um, specific instances. He kept claiming everybody wants this. Everybody wants yep. the abortion to go back to the states and those decisions to be made in each state. Nobody wanted that. Uh, yeah. A few conservative judges wanted it, and the Project 2025 people, and uh, J.D. Vance and Trump wanted it. So what she did masterfully is say, um, do you think that the woman who's bleeding out in a parking lot because she's going through a miscarriage and not allowed to have an abortion because she's having said miscarriage, do you think she wants it? And then she said, and do you think the 12-year-old child who yep. was raped um, uh, by a family member wants to have that child? Uh, so tell me who wants this. I mean, that, that's what it comes yeah. down to, is that um, I know all of the men in this room uh, want access to abortion for uh, women because they uh, trust women and they respect women. Um, the members of the Republican Party, and here's what I'll say, and I'm going to throw out a very incendiary term, is that the women in the Republican Party who um, won't even talk about anything on uh, abortion and believe that, um, you know, in, the, in this very absolutism of that there should be no abortion, period, they're female misogynists at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. they are. Well, we have to understand, folks, that this is our country and we have to take it back. Pure and simple. Yeah. Okay, and we can only do that by coming out and voting in huge numbers and letting the establishment know that you can't mess with us anymore. And on that note, uh, Roxy from St. Charles, thank you, Roxy, for listening. Thank you for calling in. You have a question for the candidates uh, on the Constitution. Hopefully, there's going to be another debate, man. Uh, go ahead, Roxy. Yeah. You're on the air. Yeah, so a question that I believe it should be asked um, is, do you believe that for the highest job in the land, any candidate should have to pass the Constitution test and an IQ test? <laughs> oh, boy. Good call. Oh, boy. Good call, Thank you, Roxy. Roxy. <laughs> Good call. Okay. Here's the, here's the thing, okay? When we want to hire even someone to come clean our house. You mean a stable genius? <laughs> we, we are asking people for references. We are asking people for experience. This guy... Absolutely. It, 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 any, any politician, Roxy, not just for the president, anybody who wants to run for elected office should have to pass a test at least on the fundamentals of the Constitution, right? I, absolutely. I totally agree. And I doubt Tom, uh, Trump would even know three answers. Oh, Trump. I remember the last time that uh, this uh, this guy had pulled out a a copy of the Constitution from his pocket, one of the gold star, uh, you know, uh, members of the, of the family of, of a person who, who was a Marine or a veteran, and pulled out this uh, copy of the Constitution from his pocket and said, hey, I carry this Constitution with me all the time. Do you? So, uh, you're absolutely be, right. Trump will be selling one that he's marked up <laughs> in, in just a yeah, few days. And, I'm sure he's going to release his next. And for an extra $300, and, and he'll he, sign it for you. Exactly. Sorry, and he'll uh, be holding it upside down, too. <laughs> <laughs> well <There you> played. <laughs> <laughs> well, Roxy, you know, spread the word, my friend. Spread the word in, in St. Charles. Let your family and your friends and your neighbors know. See, we have nothing against Republicans, okay? We, we have the two-party democracy over here. That's fine. We agree with you. Nothing against the Republicans. They're welcome to have their conservative values, but for them to pick this idiot as their representative, that really tells me something about who the Republican yeah. Party has become now. Okay. Uh, Roxy, thank you uh, right. so much for calling in. We are running yeah. into our end of the segment that we come to with our person of the week. And uh, we have got a great person of the week lined up. We'll be bringing them up shortly after a quick break. And stay tuned. And if you want to uh, participate, folks, feel free to call in. 773-763-9278 is the number to call in. Are you a business looking for the right talent or a job seeker searching for your dream career? Look no further than the Center for Strategic Solutions, your workforce solution experts. Our experienced team at the Center for Strategic Solutions is dedicated to connecting employers with top-tier talent 
and helping job seekers find opportunities that truly align with their goals. We're more than just consultants. We're your partners in success. Ready to take your workforce to the next level or land that ideal job? Contact the Center for Strategic Solutions today at 1-847-306-9274 or visit us online at www.cfssus.com. The Center for Strategic Solutions, your bridge to a brighter future in the Windy City. The number to call is 847-306-9274 or send an email to info at cfssus.com. That is info at cfssus.com. Welcome back to the Lightning Strike with Mohammed Fahim. Good morning, folks. Welcome back uh, to the Lightning Strike. We are here every Sunday morning from 9 to 10 on WCPT 820 AM and online at theheartlandsignal.com worldwide and on facebook.com slash WCPT 820 live also. With me in the studios today, uh, Ken DeLuke, uh, John Arena, and Marie Newman. And our producer for the person of the week, Sheila White, is on the line now. Sheila, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, team. Um, I'm excited about our person of the week. Her name is Kathy Pecora, and she works in the Will County area, the Will County Development and Economics, with helping individuals with their utility bills, with food. Um, there's a, a community gardening that they have, and also mm-hmm. with rent. And this organization has partners in the Chicago area as well. So, Kathy, mm-hmm. welcome to the Lightning Strike. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Sheila. I really appreciate it. Good morning, Kathy. Good morning, Muhammad. How are you? I what am... a great show today. <laughs> That's all I can say, though. I can have no bias. I am representing Will County, Illinois right now, mm-hmm. but I love it. <laughs> well, here's the thing, Kathy. Uh, we, at the end of the day, we are all Americans, okay? The party labels right. come later, Okay. Uh, I consider yeah. myself an American first and then a Democrat and a, the rest of it, right? So we exactly. have to look and see who is doing the best for the for the country. And um, right. Will County Economic Development. So what do you do? I mean, how do people get in touch with you if they need some help, Kathy? Okay, well, I'm with the Will County uh, Land Use Department uh, Community Development. Okay. And I have the Full Grow Community Garden Program. Uh-huh. And what we, yeah, you know, coming out, it's 10 years strong, and we were looking at the the environment of Will County. It's currently 56% ag, but we have so many areas that are underserved and have low to no access to healthy nutritional food. Mm-hmm. So we looked at this reality and thought, well, why don't we start putting some community gardens in areas that service food pantries. So it's twofold because a lot of these organizations are community centers or churches, and they have a great public reach. And then they have a food pantry. So we can supply that food pantry and free up those spending dollars that the pantries need to purchase from food banks. So then they can purchase, you know, more uh, costly items like pro- like proteins and milk mm-hmm. and eggs. And so... So that kind of was our origin. And then as COVID happened, we called it our partners, um, our COVID blessing, because you had to, like, find one. Mm-hmm. And our COVID blessing was the CARES dollars that came from the federal government, and we could improve our cold storage and holding of food. So and mm-hmm. as we progress through this, now we can use, and we're trying to develop a system, and it's already starting to have our pantries be sources for groceries as well. So they could be places that can hold food. We can support our local growers and have pop-up markets. And then working with the state, well, working through Chicago, started linked up Illinois at the experimental station, we can have our pantry market also take SNAP benefits. So, okay. you know, that's the one goal. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. I live in Plainfield, so I'm pretty much in Will County, okay? Yeah. And uh, do you guys have any kind of a community garden in the Plainfield area? 
We don't. Not at this time. We have, uh, currently we have 39. We have uh, gardens in, um, we're starting in Wilmington. That's our furthest south. We have gardens in University Park and Moni, and the majority of them are in the Joliet area. Okay. We have a, uh, yeah, we started a program, a youth training program called Green Guardians with the uh, Heart Haven Outreach in Bolingbrook. Okay. And so we did, yeah, train to learn about environmental sciences and studies because we want to develop just experience and grow our training as well as starting to have our stewards of the earth. Kathy, yeah. uh, quick so, question. How many people or families uh, participate or approximately participate in your programs? Well, it's our churches, and then they have their own uh, staff. And they'll have volunteers, and so we use our garden funds now to help them have interns and to operate programs. So um, what's really great is that, you know, one of our, well, all nations, Harvey Brooks Foundation and the National Hook of a Black Women Joliet chapter utilize their garden funding this year from the grants that we have for the We Will Grow Community Garden Program to establish STEM and STEAM programs. So they had interns work with the instructors. So we're teaching, like, you know, uh, teaching the teacher. So our next generation of instructors will be our interns. And so the okay. benefits come through our food pantries. And so I would say with what we have now, we're feeding thousands of families. We're growing over 100,000 pounds of food. That's great. With our partners. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Kathy and Ashila, thank you so much for bringing Kathy and the resources that she's talking about. Uh, Kathy, how do people get in touch with you guys? Where do you, where do we find you? Uh, we can, you can get in touch with me at kpecora at willcountylandyouth.com. Okay, and I would love to uh, sit down with you one of these days. Uh, we do have an office in Joliet that we can meet at, or I could come out to your office and, and learn more. Uh, and I think you should also try to get in touch with uh, the Park District. Uh, my my younger daughter is a commissioner for the Plainfield Park District. And uh, okay. they have so many parks. Uh, you know, uh, In fact, uh, I believe... Uh, uh, Illinois is, or Plainfield Park District is like the 11th largest in the state of Illinois. Oh, that would be fantastic. We're working with the Lockport Township Park District in Fairmont. We have a, a community center pantry there, and we just started working with the um, Wilmington Park District. So any partnership connection would be greatly appreciated, Muhammad. Thank you. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll let my daughter know, and uh, Bill Toman is the chairman of the of the park district uh, bill was one of the guys who helped to get our show started over here he wrote the first oh. check for the show when we got started at wcpd so bill is a good friend also and uh, yeah we'll see if we can make some of those connections for you okay on that note folks we got two more minutes to go to uh, to wrap up the show sheila and kathy thank you so much for joining us and uh, thank again you. We have uh, Murray and uh, Murray and any final thoughts? John, any final thoughts? Ken, any final thoughts before we wrap up? You know, um, what I would say we should all really concentrate on our friends and family that are independents and remind yourself and everybody that's talking to independents that um, they're contextualists. They're worried about what's here and now. What are, what are the price of eggs and gas right now? Mm -hmm. um, are we safe? All of those things. Um, and the future of our country and how important democracy is. But really, they're here and now is the price of eggs and gas. And please remember that. Meet them where they're at so that we get the right choice in terms of a president. Yeah. Don't forget the three magic words compared to what? John, John. final thoughts. The same thing. I just think it's so important to talk to the people that will will have a reasoned conversation about what's going on. You could disagree, and it, in, in my life, we've I've disagreed with people who are conservative and yet had respectful debates, and and we've all been able to move along. This is a threat to our fundamental ability, everybody's fundamental ability to be free and to make their own decisions. So absolutely, that's where we at? So absolutely, folks, especially when data. a when a candidate who's running for president comes out and says in a public forum that if you vote for me now, 
We'll make sure that you will never have to vote again. Where does that leave us? On that note, thank you so much for listening in. Please go to our website, tlschicago.com. If you want to come as a guest on the show, do let us know through the website. And do support the show to keep us uh, going every single Sunday over here. Have a nice week, folks. Enjoy the rest of the week. And we'll see you again next Sunday, same place, same time. It's 10 o'clock.